specific population. So just the, the general operating costs of you know, corrections and the mental health institutions of DGW, state police, and county assistance offices, and such. You can see Department of Corrections appropriation totals about 1.8 billion. And on the next chart, you can just see the expenditures by category. About 72% is personnel related, 25% is non personnel operating expenses. And that is uh, not inconsistent with, with the rest of those agencies that showed on, on the previous chart. The next chart simply shows corrections complement versus the rest of state government. You can see corrections complements increased by 5.6% since 2006, while the remainder of the state has seen a complement decrease by uh, just about that, that same amount, same percentage amount, 5.8%. <clears throat> now, I, I talked about the governor's budget and how we got to balance. There are some risks in that. The major one being the state of the U.S. economy. If we do see a jobless recovery, then personal income tax revenue won't be where it's projected. Uh, corporate tax will not be where it is projected. Consumer confidence will not result in the sales tax revenue that, that we anticipate. Higher oil and gas prices will certainly impact the economy of Pennsylvania. You know, it said that you know, every dollar increase in the cost of a barrel of oil takes a billion out of the economy. There's uncertainty in revenue collections right now. Uh, you know, gross receipts tax revenue was down significantly this year. Does that uh, raise questions about the tech sector in Pennsylvania and revenue generated uh, from that sector? But those are some issues that we're going to struggle with for the next several months as well. So, so there are risks to the budget that the, the governor proposed, and these are just a few of those. And we have some challenges ahead. While the 2011-12 budget is responsive to the fiscal realities and the tough decisions that, that had to be made, it's only a first step, and really, we look, the governor looked at it as we didn't get here overnight, we're not going to solve the problem in one budget year, so that's why he took action in 2010-11 to solve the problem in 2011-12 to ease the challenges in 2012-13. But what we're going to face is we're going to see escalating pension obligations, uh, as was previously mentioned, rising health care costs. We are going to continue to see growth in corrections costs. So future budgets you know, have to build on the steps that the governor took this year to eliminate uh, programs, get our fiscal house in order. Uh, but we still need to make continuing improvements in promoting jobs and job growth. That means cutting taxes, making strategic investments. If we want to truly grow our economy, uh, it means we have to create jobs. Uh, and it's going to take a, a little bit of uh, investment to do that. And the governor does believe we need to invest in students and education in ways that, that actually result in student achievement. And so we need to, to do that in future budgets. The next chart really shows what our pension obligations are going to be in, in the coming years. You know, where we are today is uh, the governor has met the statutory obligation for it, our pension contribution. And we're at you know 70%. But because of the collars that were implemented in legislation a few years ago, that level is not going to be uh, enough to, to sustain a, a sufficient balance. And we're going to see our funded liability drop to about 52% over the next few years. So we're going to see have to get a handle on, on our pension obligations, and we're going to see increased payments and at the same time have to make uh, probably some significant structural changes to our pension system. The next chart shows debt service. Over the past several years, uh, the Commonwealth has dramatically increased its uh, debt financing of public projects on the economic development side as well as in virtually every, every sector. And so we're going to see increased debt service payments over the next several years. And that's if we issue 
no additional debt for any new major projects. So this financial statement is sort of a high level summary of what 2012-13 looks like based on uh, current revenue projections, we expect you know 760 million increase in <laughs> revenue, but we also expect again healthcare costs to, to increase, corrections costs to increase, retirement contributions to increase, debt service to increase. Uh, so, and then we estimate that every other program in state government is essentially flat funded. You know, we'll still see a you know, half a billion dollar deficit going into 2012-13. Uh, so. I mentioned earlier how we were able to take a, an ending balance, or proposing to take an ending balance in 2010-11 of 580 million as the beginning balance in 2011-12, and that helps get the 2011-12 budget to balance. Uh, well, the governor's initial proposal did not include any balance to take forward to 12-13. So should there be higher than expected you know, revenue projections, Having a positive balance to bring forward to 1213 uh, would be extremely helpful in getting our 2012-13 budget to balance. And the debate that's really beginning today and in, or yesterday in earnest with uh, budget negotiations, any additional dollar of spending just adds to the structural deficit moving forward. And that's the challenge that, that we're going to face this year, next year, and, and probably after that. So with that, I'll be glad to take any questions. Thank you, sir. Questions from the association? Yeah. Mr. Tartline, uh, again, I think you heard me with Mr. Nadal uh, introduce myself. I'm attorney Todd Egan. I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, if you don't understand or you wish me to clarify, just ask me to do so. If I don't hear that, I will assume that you understand the question. Okay? Now, let's talk about um, the slide number, number three here. Um, Slide three um, talks about the general general fund budget, and it talks about the fund when Governor Corbett took office. Correct? The uh, the, the middle column was actually the mid-year update that uh, Secretary Soderbergh had, so it was you know a month before, but it was essentially not not, not changed when Governor. Okay, so when, when you say mid-year, you're talking December 31st, 2010? Like okay, roughly. All right. Now, so from what I understand, your previous testimony is that uh, even though the Department of Revenue uh, issued a press release on May 2nd of 2011 indicating that there was a general fund collection surplus of $505.9 million, this figure hasn't been adjusted to reflect the Department of Revenue's fund balance surplus? This has not been adjusted to reflect that. We're okay. still looking at those numbers to ascertain how much of that is one time, how much may be recurring, and then uh, it's likely they'll be adjusted. Okay. Well, isn't it, isn't it true, and I don't know if you, maybe you didn't hear Governor Corbett talk about this fund balance. He was specifically talking about the five, I'll say 500 million, for purposes of brevity, but he was specifically referencing that yesterday in a press conference that that he was talking about the five hundred million dollar surplus, was he not? And and during the press conference, in fact, he was asked he, he was asked specifically about it, and he didn't dispute that it, it, it existed. But yet today, when you sit here today, you're talking about this. It could be off by if it's off by one percent, it could be two hundred and fifty million dollars. Right. Right. The, the numbers we have for revenue are the five hundred five. No. Okay. And in fact, Governor Corbett, during the, I don't know if it was a press conference, but he was discussing it. He didn't try to dispute that that existed, did he? No. Okay. 
Now, you talk about um, in slide three, um, if we look at expenditures from the current budget to the pr projected budget, we're talking about uh, an in increase in expenditures of about $1.6 billion. Is that what the governor has proposed? And maybe my math's wrong. In, in state funds only, not total spending. Okay. So when you add in federal stimulus funds and others, you know, essentially the, the budget is taking spending back to 2008, 2009 levels, so it's not a, an increase in funding. Well, in, well maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I'm certainly not. Um, a numbers guy, and I don't admit to be a numbers guy, but when I look at slide three, I, I'm looking at um, mid-year, the mid-year projection expenditures are being, it says 28,275, right. all right? So 28 represents, we're talking in millions of dollars. Then I'm looking at expenditures, the projection for expenditures in 2011, 2012 to be 29,874. Right. So now, when I say 1.6 billion, is that a fair estimate of the increase in expenditures? Exactly. That was the projection. This, this slide is the projection of what the cost to carry budget would have been had no changes been made. Okay. If you continued spending uh, on the same path with no major adjustments that the governor proposed, then you would have seen that increase in, in spending and that $4.2 billion deficit. Okay. So when we look at um, when we're looking at what the, the, the governor is proposing at slide nine, um, he's looking for a reduction in expenditures of about, um, I don't know, about 0.7 billion. <coughs> well, if, if you look at it, uh, yeah, the, the previous slide, slide eight. Okay. You can see you know, 2.6 billion in spending reductions, uh, and then uh, a couple areas where uh, some savings occurred to get us to, to fill that 2.8 billion dollar gap that still remained. Okay, but you know, my why then would you look when when I look at slide nine? Um, do I see that expenditures are proposed to be decreased by, by only, and I'm using 0.7 billion, but I mean that, those, those numbers are different, are they not? They are, and part of that is because of moving tobacco settlement bonds into the general bond, and so it's not an exact comparison. But okay. Well, and let's, you brought up an area that I wanted to talk to you about, that the tobacco settlement fund, you, you had mentioned that Governor Corbett um, did not want to come up with any gimmicks and didn't want to do any shifting in the budget, but, but yet he's, he's taking the tobacco money and shifting it, is he not? He is, and the reason for that is because of previous diversions of tobacco. Essentially, essentially what happened is the tobacco settlement fund payment is received in April of each year. So the payment for April 2010 was to fund programs in the 2011-12 fiscal year. The payment in 2000, April 2011 is to fund programs in the fiscal 2011-12 fiscal year. But what happened in 2010-11 was essentially they took that, and, and, and I don't mean to say Governor Rendell or the General Assembly, I mean it was a collective decision took the April 2010 payment for the 2011-12 fiscal year, but also took the 2011, the April 2011 payment, also for the 2010-11. So essentially you used two years payments to support activities of one year, and that would be the 250 million diversion to the general fund, 121 million um, to pay pension obligations, plus funding to support the program. So what happens then in 2011-12, there wasn't enough tobacco settlement money to support the programs like smoking cessation, 
and health research and those programs 